The interesting thing about translation is that it's really just another form of adaptation. Just like I had to change things when you adapt a movie into a book to better fit that new format, so too must things both be lost and gained in the process of changing something from one language to another. Sure, most translations strive to convey the general meaning of what's being said, and usually only make changes to help the sentence or joke or whatever sound more natural in the given language, but there are plenty of examples of this being done awfully. I'm sure that we all remember how four kids ruined a generation by referring to rice balls as jelly donuts, for example. But changing Japanese thing A into English thing A, or potentially into English thing B, is about as basic as this problem gets. And today, I want to look at one of the more complicated translation jobs that I've ever seen, and how various different people from various different groups went about tackling it. So, let's talk about the Psychopaths movie. Now, I originally threw up a spoiler warning in the script here, but after I finished writing this, I realized that I didn't really end up spoiling anything. I mean, I'm showing footage of stuff that happens, yeah, but without context it won't really mean anything to you. But if you feel like you need it, then spoiler warning here, but otherwise you should be fine. So, here's what you need to know. Psychopaths is a detective cop drama anime set 100 years into the future and takes place in a cyberpunk version of Japan. And that's about it for the sake of this video. So translation-wise, things were mostly smooth sailing in the first season of the anime, as Japanese thing A got translated into English thing A without difficulty, and for the most part it just ended there. But in the movie, however, the main character, Akane, flies outside of Japan to somewhere new, and it's here the problems begin to arise, because most of the characters in this new setting canonically speak English. So in the Japanese version of the anime, Akane is Japanese, speaks Japanese, and lives in Japan, as you would expect. So when she travels abroad, most of the people she meets speak English, a different language. Now, a lot of you savvy anime viewers might already know where I'm going with this, because anime has something of a history of getting Japanese voice actors to speak awful broken English, or English for these scenes, and the same is sadly true of the Psychopaths movie. Now, normally this isn't much of a problem, because it's usually used as a one-off thing, and is easy even for us native speakers who recognize how awful it is to overlook. Unfortunately though, because the English speaking characters are such a huge part of the movie, we have to listen to their English again. They sound regular army methods. Are you marginalized? And again. You animals lost sight of true justice where you entrusted fate to an oracle machine. And again. At the arrival of the individual, violence has a detoxifying effect. It takes away the inferiority complexes and change the contemporary and the disparate attitude of native people. It honestly makes the movie nigh unwatchable for me, just because of how frequent it is. It's like watching The Godfather, but if all the dialogue was sped up so that it sounded like it was being said by the chipmunks. It robs the movie of any seriousness it was trying to convey as I just laugh over all the dialogue. But surely that isn't an issue in the dub, right? Well, let's just switch over to that and find out, shall we? So, in the first season of the dubbed anime, the characters are canonically Japanese and do live in Japan, but everyone just speaks English. It doesn't make any sense if you think about it for too long, but it's sort of a conceit of all dubs, and it's an easy enough thing to suspend your disbelief for. And hey, since Funimation hires professional English voice actors, they'll be able to remove all the English from the Japanese movie and make that watchable now, right? Well, yes and no. The voices are all replaced and do sound much better, but this breaks the plot of the movie in several ways. You see, this dub, like most dubs, is operating under the assumption that everyone, no matter where they're from, speaks English. But because the plot of this movie is about a Japanese person going over to an English-speaking nation, there are a lot of scenes based around the idea that the characters can't understand what the other person is saying, which doesn't make sense if everyone speaks the same language. Here, I'll show you what I mean. 
This is a scene from the beginning of the movie where these guys who all speak English are trying to talk to this guy who only speaks Japanese to conduct some illegal goings-ons. So here's what they did in the original Japanese. You are Mr. Miyazaki. We need a car. Okay. As you can see, a scene based around the idea they couldn't understand each other. Now let's look at how the dub handles this. So, you're Mr. Miyazaki. That's right. But turnabout's fair play. I gotta check you too. All right, say something. We need a core. Identity confirmed. There we go. Let's talk business. Now, credit where it's due, that's a pretty smart change. Because everyone speaks English in the dub's world, they change the translator into a voice identifier. But that fancy trick only works once. For example, here's a scene that just no longer makes sense in the English dub. I'm Nicholas Wong, ma'am. I'm captain of the Union Military Police Force. And I assume you must be Inspector Akane Sunomori from the Japanese Ministry of Health and Welfare. I am. Then welcome to the Southeast Asian UN. So here, she just looks at her watch for no reason, which feels out of place and kinda breaks the pace of the scene, because in the original she was activating a translator. But what else can you really do? Completely switch everything around and have the dub voice actors speak broken Japanese for the new characters? Actually, that'd be really funny the more that I think about it. Konnichiwa, Aikanai-san! Eshii hentai baka! Kawaii! Tonari! Ching chong! Ching chong bing bong! I am. Welcome to the specially administrated zone. So, you can see the crossroads we're at here. The Japanese version is all but ruined by the unlistenable English, and while comparatively being much better, the English dub loses a lot in translation. But what else can you really do? Well, as Akane learns herself in the series, sometimes you need to operate outside the law to get shit done. And that's where the English Eradication Edition comes in. Much like fan recuts of films like Highlander 2 that removes all the alien shit, or the Star Wars cuts that add back in the original scenes that were cut by George Lucas, the English Eradication Edition is a fan recut of the Psychopaths movie that seeks to fix the subbed version by redubbing the original broken English with Funimation's lines. So for example, they take the audio of this guy speaking his line from the dub and insert it over the original Japanese English take. The end result is that the characters who are supposed to speak Japanese speak Japanese, and the characters who are supposed to speak English speak English, but fluent English this time. For example, let's watch that same meetup scene from earlier, but this time from the English Eradication Edition. So, you're Mr. Miyazaki. We need a car. Okay. So already, that is a genius solution, but it goes even further. You see, it might be weird for Akane to switch from doing perfect Japanese to doing perfect English, and you would easily be able to hear the change in voice actors. So the solution they decided upon was that the Japanese characters in the film, like Akane and Kogumi, still speak the broken English from the original Japanese sub. You're really something. You only grind it if you don't kill me now. Well, as terrifying as you make that sound, we have some important questions to ask you. This is worlds better than what we had previously. Because instead of the English holding the movie back, now it's actively enhancing it. Because now there's this weird sense of three-dimensionality that gets added to the main cast in the Eradication Edition. It makes them feel like real people, who are trying to speak a different language as best they can, and the fact that they're not perfect at it is a very humanizing thing. Granted, that was also kind of in the original sub, but all the other people who should have spoken perfect English having equivalent skills kind of took away from it there. Honestly, I think the Eradication Edition is the best way to watch the Psychopaths movie. 
Not that the dub is bad, mind you. In fact, I actually think it's one of the best dubs Funimation's ever done. But the Eradication Edition worked out such a simple and perfect solution to what was a tangled web of complex problems that I kind of consider it a work of art all its own. So as long as you don't mind raising your crime coefficient a bit to find it, I highly recommend seeking it out. Special thanks to my wonderful Patreon patrons, including Joe Anderson, Forgotten Paladin, Princess Scotch Tape, A Cool Guy, Logamorphos, Dingo's Trash, Sidney Bennett, Jada Prog, Calvin Ryman, Ludwig, Isaiah Christo, Mythnut, Soul, and Renatasha.